Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the emerging markets uh, consumer uh, sector or consumption theme. So actually, the emerging markets have been uh, transitioning from a world factory to the world's largest consumer in the global economy. So considering its vast population and a still low penetration in most sectors, we believe the rising emerging market consumer will be a multi-decade theme. So um, the among emerging markets, this transition uh, looks more evident in Asia, especially at the current juncture where we are going through the pandemic. We expect to see more significant changes in China due to the impact of the pandemic and the new direction of the government policy. Thus today, I will focus on Asia consumption and uh, take a uh, lots of example from China, the largest consumer market in EM region with the uh, most dynamic changes expected for the next several years to come. The um, Asia consumption growth may sound familiar to some of you since we have heard from the media that Asia consumers have emerged as the largest consumer in many industries already. For example, um, on the right hand chart, you can see that Alibaba's only one promotion days GMB um, that became bigger than that of all the major promotion days combined in the US. Besides this, uh, even like the Chinese outbound tourist uh, expenditure is already more than double that of the U.S. travelers. So sometimes this kind of big size, big market size or big, mar big size of the revenue or earnings of the companies in Asia misleads investors to the thought that maybe Asia consumption has grown enough already. However, I want to emphasize that the current big market size or company uh, this earnings or the business size are not because of the market is already well penetrated. This is because the, the, the population is huge. Um, as the left hand chart shows, the number of Asia's millennials is over 12 times bigger than that of the US. On the other hand, the penetration ratio is most, uh, in most sectors are still very low. So the impact of a, so only a slight percentage increase of the penetration can be huge from the, uh, from the perspective of investment opportunities. For example, the number of passport holders in China is currently only about 10% of the population. But if it goes only up to 15%, that incremental number of people is bigger than the, the whole, the UK population. So therefore, we need to be mindful that the, the Asian consum uh, consumption growth is a multi-decade theme and we are still staying in the early stage of that big growth uh, path. So we are now seeing the, that the consumption theme is one of the, the reasons why developed market investors want to have positions in emerging markets. Um, however, we also witnessed that most of, most of those investors uh, still approach this theme with um, the kind of old frame that used to be worked well in the emerging stage of their countries. Back then, uh, investing in traditional consumer sectors such as consumer, um, consumer staples and consumer discretionary was pretty much enough to cover the most benefits from uh, consumption growth. However, in current emerging Asia, young generations consumption patterns are very different as they grew up with new technology and globalization. At the same time, this region is starting to see aging population issues as well, which creates different demands from what the young generation wants. So this means that the beneficiaries of the, the overall consumption growth in Asia are becoming very diverse in terms of sector, from traditional consumer sectors to healthcare or insurance, retail banking, or um, information technology, et cetera. So we believe that the proper approach to Asia consumption growth theme should be beyond traditional consumer sectors. Also, another critical thing to understand for Asia consumption theme is that um, the good investment ideas should be different uh, country by country, even under the same theme. Unlike other sectors such as financials or um, energy or materials, where we usually see the similar stock price movements by uh, the same global issues, um, consumption trends are mainly linked to local issues. So it depends on more on their own cultural background, or indi um, indigenous uh, taste or flavor or different regulations, et cetera. So for example, um, the e-commerce industry is the high growth sector in most countries, but it can be a different story when it comes to stock picking. 
So if you look at the map of, on the right side, you can see the top two players in the e-commerce industry in China and India. So Alibaba and Jindong are all local companies, but India's leading companies are all foreign companies. So the number one is Amazon, so we all know that. And then number two is Flipkart. That's over 80% of this company um, is owned by Walmart already. So in China, uh, thanks to government regulation and the different languages, which is not English, uh, local, uh, local companies were able to grow um, as leaders and then the, the, led the market growth for the last two decades. But in India, um, actually, it was very hard for us to find uh, some good listed companies to invest uh, because the, um, the listed local companies were mostly niche players or quality was relatively low. So what I'm trying to say here is, although some themes or some industries sound all very interesting in emerging markets, but we need to be very in, we need to be mindful that the, um, the attractive investments are usually very different from country to country. So therefore, the key to success in investing in Asia consumption is an active approach to pick the best idea from each country, depending on its own uh, situation. So here you can see um, that how different each age group's interests are in, in China, for example. So um, AI, the people who were born in 80s and 90s and even younger consumers, so including the millennials and Gen Z, are more interested in online services or consumer discretionary and IT products, while the older generations are, are interested in healthcare, insurance, and other consumer staples. So this is why we need to take a the more flexible approach in terms of sector when you look for beneficiaries of consumption growth. So then I want to hear from here, I want to um, share some key trends and changes that we currently witness in Asia consumer markets and their implications on uh, investment. First, the, obviously the online engagement got deeper. Actually, the North Asian countries such as China and Korea were already ahead of developed markets. Um, regarding uh, service, uh, the online service penetration. Younger generations have led this development originally and so far be until uh, the pandemic, but it penetrated new consumers in the older group and also in lower tier cities as well uh, through the pandemic. So it's not only new users, uh, for the existing users as well, the time spending increased about 35% after the pandemic started. So as the pandemic is becoming longer than initially thought, um, consumers' new habits for online services are becoming a more like new normal. So um, this means online services will remain an important sector for Asia consumption theme even after the pandemic. So only um, from the bottom up perspective, it is noticeable that the com a competitive landscape is starting to change to the opposite way in China and Korea. So China is moving to more uh, multiplayer markets from almost like duopoly one uh, on the back of the government's regulatory initiatives as, as well as innovative formats or services led by newer and smaller players. But on the other hand, in Korea, uh, online industries have been very fragmented so far, but few companies are finally now finally starting to consolidate the industry uh, on the back of the um, kind of deeper engagement uh, in online services in, in Korea because of the Korea second wave started from uh, last summer and it's still, it's, they are struggling to contain uh, the situation. So thus our stock picking needs to be changed to reflect these expected uh, changes as well. So um, this is another interesting change that we see in China uh, through the pandemic. Um, as the left-hand chart shows, the consumers trading up trend for premium products got accelerated last year uh, because consumers care more about their health and other quality factors. However, it does not necessarily benefit foreign brands in China market, as you, as you can see on the right-hand chart. Last year, when China was going through the pandemic, local brands still posted um, positive growth while the growth of foreign brands turned negative. So we have seen gradual um, changes to this direction uh, for the last three to four years, but the pace accelerated um, uh, much faster than expected in 2020 uh, when they were going through the pandemic. So the consumer's old perception of foreign brands and local brands are changing now, I would say. 
So that is because younger generations, such as millennials and Generation Z, uh, are tech savvy, meaning um, now they easily access detailed information about the products online and compare apples to apples before they purchase. So in the past, actually the foreign brands used to sell at a premium once it enters the market, uh, sometimes regardless of the product quality, uh, just because of that foreign, foreign uh, brands, but now it is not the case anymore. So here, more importantly, the Chinese young consumers pride in their country has supported this trend actually uh, very well. Um, so that um, since the US-China tension became very uh, severe in 2018, um, they, have, they have shown their uh, patriotism online more and more. And this kind of uh, environment has been supportive of local brands as long as the quality is good. So this trend became um, sturdier last year as they became more, even more proud of being Chinese after seeing faster containment of the virus than other major countries. These two photos on the right side um, are Chinese sportswear brand uh, Leaning and then Leaning's New York uh, Fashion Week uh, runway photos. So this brand is very symbolic for nationalism because the founder is China's first Olympic medalist. And this is not a new company actually. So it was founded about 30 years ago and it made lots of mistakes. And um, they also learned a lot of lessons for the last few decades. And finally, it is rising as a leading brand in sportswear and laserwear industry. So if you look at the photos very closely, you can see four big letters in the middle of its outfit. So it says, Zhongguo leaning. Zhongguo means China in English. So they added this China in front of the, before the leaning, their, the company name, when they launched this new higher-end sub-brand. This kind of design might look a little unfamiliar to foreigners, but actually this design and these products are selling very, very well now in China. And even celebrities, they also tend to choose the local brands when they are seen in public too. So besides this sportswear industry, we see the emergence of local brands in various sectors, even including baby products, not to mention smartphones or other home appliances. So the bottom left table shows that two out of top five cosmetic brands that were selling the best on online promotion day are already local Chinese brands. So Chinese companies have made lots of efforts to enhance product quality for the last several years. So the uh, perception of made in or made by China products is not just a cheap copycat uh, cat anymore. So plus the patriotism of the young consumer um, is boosting the emergence of lots of uh, local brands. Um, and this next trend that I believe is very interesting and important for the investment is the new wave in tourism and luxury consumption. The, you may have heard that the Chinese are the biggest consumers in the global luxury goods industry. And out of this Chinese luxury spending, the about 70% or higher was spent out of China when they traveled overseas. However, as you can see on the left graph, more than 70% of the luxury uh, spending was done inside of mainland China in 2020. So this big jump was, uh, of course, it's because of two reasons. First, the pandemic kept people from outbound traveling and the domestic tourism replaced some of these uh, travel demands. And second, the Chinese government, this is more important, the Chinese government took advantage of this situation to bring back this luxury spending of these middle-class consumers back to its own market. So they announced a much larger scale than expected relaxation in duty-free policies last year. So it has tripled the annual spending limit at duty-free shops or online purchase for the following six months after the visit to offline shops has been allowed. So uh, with this kind of a big um, the polish relaxation, so now uh, this repatriation of luxury consumption is it's becoming even more uh, important to uh, the economic transition to consumption-driven uh, economy. This is actually, this move accelerates uh, the recent changes in the travel habits of young consumers as well. That recently they would spend less time for good shopping and spend more time for new experiences when traveling overseas. So maybe it was influenced by their usage of uh, social networking services. And then you can see that on the right side, right hand chart shows how different younger consumers are even for the luxury shopping. So they care about other quality of factors, not just brands. So compared to the older generation. 
So the pandemic triggered the change of the consumer's luxury spend, uh, spending habits, and it's expected to be boosted by the government policy relaxation going forward. And besides the sectors that I just talked about, we also see good investment opportunities in other sectors and in other countries. So for example, retail banking penetration is so extremely low uh, in emerging Asia. So we are positive on high quality leading uh, consumer banks in emerging Asian countries such as India or Indonesia. Um, and also healthcare expenditure to GDP is also extremely low in emerging Asia, even compared to non-Asia e uh, emerging market. For example, India's healthcare um, spending per capita only, um, only about 200 US dollar. So while OECD average is almost 4,000 US dollar. So we are positive on hospital and pharmacy businesses or online healthcare in emerging Asia. So today, um, well, so to sum up, uh, I emphasize that the consumption growth theme is a multi-decade theme, and we are still in the early stage uh, in the long-term growth path. And also, if you are interested in this sustainable growth theme, it is important to see the opportunities in various sectors, not only in traditional consumer sectors. And um, the pandemic is creating or accelerating the new consumption uh, trend. And we think many of them are more structural than a one-off event. So consumption theme is attractive, um, well, attractive because it offers both defensiveness and growth, but more importantly, the key to success is active investing from a bottom-up approach. Since it, uh, it is an individual stock that we are investing in rather than just the overall theme or overall industry. Um, I think the time's up and then I'm going to wrap right here. And then uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our presentation. And I hope it helped you uh, understand emerging market.